<laughs> What's going on guys? Manchester United 1, Inter Milan 0. And yo, that was that was light work. That was very light work. Um some great performances today, some not so great performances, but overall some decent stuff to take away from the game, man. Um, I thought the way we try and play football now under Oli, like you can see what he wants to do. Um, I still don't think that we have the calibre of creativity to actually be at our best playing that way. But I think attacking wise, the pace down the flanks, the quick transitions, I think it's clear to see what he's trying to do. Um, it was a mad one, really. You got James and Rashford played on the wings at the beginning. Martial down the middle. I like Tony down the middle. His link up play was very good. There were certain situations where he absolutely toasted a few men, played a few passes. And even though we didn't score, you could kind of see in it like what he's trying to do. Um, Rashford and James end product was poor today. Um, someone said to me on Twitter, they were like, oh, how come you always get onto Rashford, you don't get onto James? The reason why I won't get onto James is because he's a championship baller. This is his first his first time stepping up. Rashford's been in the Premier League for three seasons. This will be his fourth in it. So I have to judge him as a seasoned Premier League player. After three seasons, you're a seasoned Premier League player. I don't think he's good enough, bruv. Like I, I said, he played well last game, but it was against Leeds. Leeds are shit. We played against an Inter Milan team that sat back and he looked terrible. And this is the thing. Um, I said Mason Greenwood is what certain men think that Marcus Rashford is. Like, Mason Greenwood is like a high level talent, elite level talent. Marcus Rashford ain't that for me. Marcus Rashford's a good player. He's he took his chance when he got it. He's in the first team. He's not a Manchester United number 10, and he's not an England number 10 or starter, really. Like, I think he's a good squad player, bro. I wouldn't compare him to Jesse Lingard in terms of skill set because they've got different skill sets. But in terms of their ceilings, I think they're going to be very similar players, bruv. I think that Marcus Rashford will, looks more spectacular, but overall, them two are the same kind of level, bruv. They're not, they're not top-level ballers, bruv. And um, man can say age in that. Rashford's 23. Wan-Bissaka's what? 21? And he's potentially one of the best right-backs in the world. Like, Rashford will never get that to that level because I just don't think he has the football IQ and I just don't think he's good enough. So... I think one argument I had recently was Rooney, Manchester United number 10, Rashford number 10. At the same age, you can't compare the two. Rooney was an elite level talent at that age, innit? And even though he didn't have longevity, because you could look at, obviously, like his physicality, how he looked after himself and that, Rooney hit some heights, bro. Do you know what I mean? What he was doing for England, what he was doing for United. I don't see Rashford ever doing that. And... Um, that's why a man calls him Rashbeck and that when I'm bantering. But honestly, that's not me being too hard on, man. That is me just being straight. I said it. Like, Wambasaka is what certain man thought Luke Shaw was. Everyone, the way them man gassed him up into getting, like, player of the season and all that. You put Wambasaka in the side, all of a sudden, no one's talking about Luke Shaw no more. Because he's two levels above Luke Shaw. Everyone's on Wambasaka's bum. I've been wanting that guy for 18 months. And I've been telling man Luke Shaw's not good enough. And that shows you how low the levels are becoming the fan base where you man look at a Luke Shaw and you think he's actually good. Now you're seeing a Wambasaka, you're going on like we just signed Cafu, bro. And well, he might get to that level eventually, but do you see what I'm saying? Whereas that should be the standard level for every player in the team across the board. So it was just beautiful to see today. James, I'll give him time because he's just growing in. His end product's poor. His decision making's poor, but this is a level above what he's used to. So I'm going to be a lot more lenient on him than I am with Rashford. Do you know what I mean? So all the myths when man was saying, oh, I don't like Luke Shaw, yeah, because he ain't black and that. Well, boy, Rashford's black. James ain't black. I'll give James time. Rashford, as far as I'm concerned, he's not that guy. I'd love for him to prove me wrong, but right now, I don't see it, innit? I do not see it. So um, James, I'll give him time. Prospect, a lot of pace. He's got the right idea. He's positive. He tries to run at people. Like, I like how he thinks. It's just that his brain and his body aren't really in sync at the moment. Will he Will he improve to the point where he develops and he becomes a first-team player? I don't know. But he looks like a brilliant option off the bench. So, yeah, like, it's funny. And the same with um, 
Oh, I could talk about Wan-Bissaka all day for fuck's sake. Like, that's how good he is, isn't it? He was my man of the match. Him and Pogba played well today, but wan is different. Like, no one got past him. Going forward, a lot of people were saying, oh, his attacking stats aren't brilliant for Crystal Palace. Again, he played for a defensive team. Said it a million times. Now he's playing for United. He's getting the ball, going past full-backs, playing one-twos, darting into the box. Everything that I was screaming for our left-back to do last season and he didn't do. And you lot said I had an agenda. Now you're seeing a proper full-back play. Obviously, the, the um, DMs are always um, open for apologies, bruv. Luke Shaw's not that guy, bruv. He's not. He's never going to be that guy. 24 years old compared to a 21-year-old. Man could talk about injuries all you want. Like, Jack Wilshere had a bag of injuries. Arsenal didn't keep him just because of how good he was before the injuries. Injuries are a part of football. He might not be the player he was because of the injuries, but there's no room for fucking sentiment. We're out here trying to win shit. Tierney's worth... If you can get Tierney for 25 million, you buy him. Danny Rose is available. He's a bit old now. He's 29. That's the only reason. But I would take him still. Because he ain't going to cost that much. But either way. Like. Twan Zebi, uh, Lindelof. And um, Wan-Bissaka today looked brilliant. Them three. Um, let's talk about Axel. Because a lot of people were saying. Oh, did we send him out on loan? For me. I'd get rid of Phil Jones. And I would blood Twan Zebi in. Like I would. Because he's good enough. He's physically good enough. Technically good enough. Didn't put a foot wrong today. With Victor, you know what you're going to get. And I just thought, yeah, um, there's no need for a Phil Jones. You've got small in already. Assuming Harry Maguire is still coming in. Do we need all them centre-backs? Not really. So it'll be interesting to see how Oli um, rotates and who he uses where, to be completely honest. But um, yeah, it'd be interesting. And also, obviously, you can see I've got the new kit. Um, one of my followers actually sent it to me. I told you, man, I ain't spending no no more money on United kits, bruv. Why them, man, are, are fleecing us? But again, last season, I got sent it, sent the pink kit. And this season, I've been sent this kit. So, now nah, I big up the followers. You, man, look out for me. Um, overall, um, the first half, I was happy with it. My biggest problem with the first half would have to be United showed again, just like last season, when teams sit back. We don't have enough creativity to open them up, man. Like, um, in in our pretty much parking the bus. Like, they didn't offer any attacking threat. I don't remember our goalkeepers having to worry about anything. But going forward, it was much the same. Get the ball out wide and then the ball just breaks down. Like, there was just, there was nothing. Like, I can see what Oli's trying to do, like the style of play. But I feel like there's not enough creativity in the side. And because of that, against teams that sit back and don't leave space in behind, that pace is, I wouldn't say it's void, but it's pretty much void. We don't have the likes of like a Mo Salah and like, for instance, if you look at the way Liverpool play, yeah, the high press, whatever, it's similar, but the only difference is they've got p people like Mane and like Salah that can actually go past players like create things from very little when things aren't going their way. Like Salah might cut in from the right and rifle one thirty yards and that. We don't have that caliber of player in these wide positions. So because of that, we become pretty predictable. That's why I think the signing of a Milinkovic Savic or um a Fernandez, we're hearing all this talk about Milinkovic Savic now, but he will cost like 90 million euros. Um, Fernandez will only cost 50, which makes me think that United are using this uh, Milinkovic Savage thing yeah, just to put pressure on Sporting to sell. I still think that Bruno is higher priority for the simple fact that we've been linked with him a lot more times. So I think that it's important that we have someone in that number 10 that can take the creative um, strain off Pogba because right now like he's our only creative outlet in the midfield. Matic is dog shit. As soon as we took him off in the second half, we started moving the ball noticeably quicker. I think Oli knows he's done out here, but like I'm not trying to see Matic in that midfield like at all. Like he's making that signing of Longstaff look even more appealing. Like we missed McTominay in there today. Like and it's funny because at the beginning I never used to rate McTominay, yeah, but what he gives us that Matic doesn't give us is mobility and speed in transition. So um, it'll be very interesting to see on the first day of the season who starts. Is Nemanja Matic starting? Because when Fred come on, man like Frederick, I've been telling you, man, I've always stood by him because I see a lot of potential in that guy. I think he's a top player. He's quick across the ground. He's two-footed. 
Um, he can shoot, he can pass, he can tackle. He's got everything. For me, I've said it a million times, he can be our Kante, yeah? Like, if he's given games. He can, because he does all the defensive dirty work just like him. He's quicker. You know what I mean? He can pass with both feet. He can shoot. The guy, is a, he's, a, he's a bloody good player. There's a reason why Pep Guardiola wanted him. It's just that Pep weren't prepared to pay the money that we paid. So, any player that Pep thinks can fit in his system... I'm willing to give a chance. And it's the same with Harry Maguire. If Pep wants Harry Maguire, then he's good enough to play for us. That's just how it is. And like, boom, if it's 80 M's, yeah, 60 million plus 20 million add-ons, so be it. You know what I mean? So, um, I was impressed by Fred when he um, come on in the second half. I was complaining, I'm not even going to lie, on Twitter, because I didn't like how many changes were made at the same time. Usually, when there's loads of changes made, it ruins the game. And it did ruin the game for like five minutes. But then United clicked. And the speed of transition, the youngsters, the enthusiasm just started to take um, take over in the second half. Chong looked sick. I don't know how this guy plays with that here. I really don't know. Because he's just, he's just a baller. And again, I'm seeing more tweets saying, oh, if Chong was like better built and more physical and that, then he can play in the Premier League. Bro. Chong can play in the Premier League now. People need to get over this physicality thing. He's technical, he's quick. And even when Ronaldo came to the Prem, like he was a skinny little shit when he first came in and he was still coming on off the bench and, and kippering, man. Like he sent a few men for a hot dog, yeah, and he possibly should have had a penalty. And he was very, um, he was very encouraging for me. Mason Greenwood. I've been telling man already. I, t I told man he's the black RVP yeah, with pace. When I, I tweeted this about six, seven months ago, man were laughing at me. X, Y, Z. Now everyone's going to jump on the bandwagon late. As usual, like, there's something about Mason that's special. Like, you can't teach um, composure. The tech that he has is different. Like, he, he done a 360 on Skriniar, like, and spun him. This is a guy that we've been linked with for the last two seasons, a centre-back. And Mason Greenwood made man look like a Sunday league player. Like, Mason 17. Like, not only did his, was his goal the perfect combination of skill, technique, composure, the whole lot, yeah? But he just lit up the pitch. His movement, everything like that is beyond his years. He is, like, the closest thing, like, in terms of, like, young English players coming through like that, that I can remember that I saw and I was like, yo, this is the real deal, was Michael Owen, bruv. Like, not because they're similar players, but because at his age already... He's showing a skill set that's far beyond his years. Like, Mason Greenwood is cold. He's very cold. Like, he's ready to start in the Premier League now. He's ready. So, for me, like, he's ahead of Daniel James for that right-hand side. He's better than James. Like, he is. James has got a bag of pace, but Mason is a better footballer, period. Like, if we started the season and we didn't buy a striker and we had Mason on the right, Rashford on the left, and Martial down the middle, I'd take that. I really would. I really would, man. Like, the guy, I said before, what man think that Rashford is, that's what Mason is. Like, I'm genuinely excited about this guy. Like, I don't think I've been... Yeah, I haven't been this excited about a British player coming through the academy because I was gassed like this over, um, over Pogba. Like, Mason, like, gives me that similar kind of feeling. Like, when I watch him, I know that I'm watching something special, isn't it? Like, obviously, Ravel was like that, but we knew that Rav wasn't going to play in the first team because of off-the-pitch stuff. Mason's a bad boy, guys. So, I don't know. Um, overall, um, it's hard to read too much into the whole Inter performance because Inter are a couple weeks behind us in pre-season. They don't have a striker. Akadi's been frozen out. For some reason, Oli don't want him. I don't really know why. Um... Maybe he doesn't think that he suits the pressing game that he wants to implement. But for me, if a striker like a Cardi is available, like you cop him and then you worry about where you're going to play him later. Because if I got 50 million and a Cardi for Lukaku, I'm biting your hand off. I'm biting your hand off. So I don't understand that situation. Um, Oli's very set in the way that he wants to play football. Another one is Angel Gomez. Um, I thought that he deserved a bit more time than he got, in all honesty. And I think a lot of that is to do with his size as well. Like, Oli's spoken about it. 
I don't understand the fascination with his size because he's no, he's not really any smaller than one matter. I know there's an age difference, but Gomez has one thing that matter doesn't have, and that's pace. So if both guys are small, like your pace can get you out of situations, your pace and your agility, so that you don't really get touched as much. So I thought that he deserved more time on the pitch. Let me know what you think about that specifically because... The Angel Gomez thing is very confusing. He's getting linked with the likes of PSG and stuff like that. And I want him to get game time because if he doesn't, we can end up losing him and end up regretting him because he's another one that talent-wise, he's one of the best in the academy. Like, he's way better than Tahith Chong when it comes to just raw talent. So um, it would be a shame to lose him. But I think there was a lot of outstanding... I don't know. There was a lot of things to take from this game. I wouldn't say there were a lot of outstanding performances. I thought Wan-Bissaka was just miles ahead of everyone um, in terms of what he gives us. I think that, yes, a lot of what he does, because we're not used to seeing it at the club, everyone's getting gassed. I do think that as well, because like right-backs, when man are saying, oh, he's man of the match, he's man of the match, we're so used to seeing Ashley Young that anything down that right-hand side was going to be um, a breath of fresh air. But this kid is genuine genuine talent so um yeah i'll give him my man of the match followed um by pogba like pogba done a few bits of skill today that was out of this world again he looks like he's settling in um let me know what you took away from this game in terms of um your your positives and your negatives even though we did win like you have to be switched on enough to know that yo there's still certain things we need to work on just like our ability to break down Defences that sit deep and certain movements, certain interchanges. Jesse was woeful again today. Um, like, I'm super honest when it comes to Jesse. Like, I see what he offers. I don't think he's as shit as people say he is or think he is. But, ah, uh, bro, like, he's been dead on the tour so far. So, let me know your man of the matches. Let me know um, who stood out for you, what stood out for you, where do you think we still need to strengthen... And yeah, man, um, undefeated on tour. Haven't conceded a goal on tour. Um, Dave wasn't used today. Hopefully he signs the new deal. But overall, it's been a good outing, guys. Make sure you smash the like button. Um, add up the socials. You know what it is. You should already have that Twitter and Instagram at Ransom Bants. And yeah, we'll catch you in the next game. <laughs>